whoever shall enter this house shall be blessed. When you see your friend off that came to visit you and you close the door, close the gates, and you go back into your room or your home, don't assume they've left. So what do you do when you're expecting a guest? Pray. Pray in your home. And if you did not do that or you don't do that, pray with them when they come. And if you still don't do that, pray when they leave. Anoint your home. Whoever shall come in through this door shall be blessed. And after doing that, you begin to stop whatever that is not of God. That as the enemy, because what you need to understand is that there are people who, when they come into your home, they themselves carry a different presence. Rather, carry a different spirit from what you carry. Because men or people are altars, are portals, are altars and are portals. Just as you are the carrier of the Holy Spirit, there are people who are carriers, who are a harbor to something different. That when they come to your home, as they leave, they leave whatever they came with. And all of a sudden, your children, they start behaving somehow. And that is because the spirit that the person came with specializes in that. And now it starts manifesting itself through your children. All of a sudden, you are being uh, choked at night when you are sleeping. It never happened before. All of a sudden, you are visited by incubus and succubus. You call them spiritual husbands and spiritual wives. They are visiting you. All of a sudden, you are tormented. You are sleeping, but your soul is not sleeping because every time you go to bed, you are tormented. Your children get sick. You don't know where it came from. Somebody came in and opened the door for those spirits to come. The Bible says in the book of uh, Exodus, and you read chapter 12, uh, you shall take the blood and you shall put it as a token, as a symbol. You shall, pu you shall put it on your doorpost and you put it there on top. And when the angel of death comes and when he sees the blood on your door, death shall not hit you. So even the anointing oil, when you put it on your doorsteps, on your entry points, when the enemy, whoever comes carrying a certain spirit that is not of God, when they see that, they will not have access to your home. And one thing I love about anointing your home is that even people who have good intentions, when they come out, they come out not the same. Somebody can come depressed, enter your home, and as soon as they go out, they will themselves will testify and say, after I went to your house, something happened, but something very good. I was like this, but this happened. Just like Obed Idiom in the Bible. The Bible says, and the Ark of the Covenant was taken to the house of Obed Idiom. And the Lord blessed him. And everyone that went to his house was blessed. The Bible says everything in his house was also blessed. That it went everywhere. It went all over. People knew. It spread that the Lord had blessed Obed Idiom in 90 days. And the King David heard about it. Everyone that went to the house of the guy was blessed. The Bible says even his household was blessed. Why? Because he accommodated the presence of God. And as we all know, that anointing oil is symbolic to the presence of the Holy Spirit. Nothing magical about the anointing oil because you need to understand that it comes down to your faith and your prayer. So we are not to glorify oil. We are not to put our trust and our hopes and our beliefs on oil as if oil protects us. No, it comes down to your prayer. It comes down to your faith because oil is just a point of contact. We call it an element of power. It's like in the days of Paul when handkerchiefs were taken from his body, from him, and the sick were healed because of the handkerchiefs that were taken from him. You can't go and say, I'm looking for a handkerchief, and you just take the handkerchief and say, I'm not going to pray. I have Paul's handkerchief. If I'm sick, I'll just put it. No, the devil is a liar. Paul was the one anointed, but the handkerchief was a point of contact. We call it a conduit. So it's very important for you to understand that. So as you are anointing your home, understand that Whatever you are doing is prophetic. That's why even in the days of Jesus, the disciples of Jesus were healing people who were sick and anointing them. The Bible says if there is anyone among you who is sick, afflicted, let him call the elders. Bring him to the elders. The elders will anoint him with anointing oil. Why? Because oil is a conduit. And every time you anoint something, you are setting it apart. You are declaring indirect and direct at the same time. That this now does not belong to this, but belongs to this. 
And if this used to have access to this, because now it's anointed, you are not going to have access to it anymore. So it is very important for you to anoint your home and all spirits that are not of God will not have access. You will see that monitoring spirits will begin to leave your home. Uh, familiar spirits, remember familiar spirits are called in Hebrew household servants. And most people when they move into a new home, they don't anoint. Not knowing that actually already there is a household servant, which is a familiar spirit in that home. So they start dealing with inherited giants, inherited spirits. Why? Because they came into a dwelling that already was dedicated to something else. And because they are just so excited that they are in a new home, they forget the most important part of it, which is the spiritual part of it. You are now coming to pray on top of altars that are diabolic. No, you anoint your home. That's why me and my wife, we usually do it every month. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, drop a comment about your experiences. Share with your family and friends. I love you. Rogo loves you more. Bye.